Hello everyone, I am Dr. Saurabh Dixit and today I have brought a very good case for you. I have already uploaded such a case in my YouTube series. So that was an old case of peripheral arterial disease. So today I am at my another hospital in uh, Najafgarh. So today I got a very interesting patient and this patient is a patient of peripheral arterial disease. So let me tell you what is peripheral arterial disease. When we talk about peripheral arterial disease due to blockage of the main peripheral arterial trunks, there will be symptoms ranging from six p's or maybe claudication or maybe you can say rest pain and gangrene or ulceration also so let us try to understand what are the things that we should be looking in a patient of peripheral arterial disease first of all the history is very important so with me i have a 56 year old male and i'll take a proper history ye aapko kab se dard shuru hua aur kahan dard shuru hua kaise dard shuru hua tha sir ye mere ko ek saal pehle yeah यहाँ दर्द आया था हल्का सा थोड़ा सा चलता था तो यहाँ दर्द पूरी मार जाता था दस मिनट बैठ गया फिर उतने चल लेता था ओके सो जस्ट सी ही हैज गिवन यू अ ब्यूटीफुल हिस्ट्री दैट द पेशेंट सेज द पेन स्टार्टेड एंड व्हेन ही यूज टू वॉक और एक्सरसाइज द पेन वाज एक्सक्रूशिएटिंग and this went to an extent that that he has to take rest so what is this we are talking about intermittent claudication students what is intermittent claudication it is exercise induced pain so this is what is very important and when we talk about intermittent claudication it is very important to understand where the pain is so aap jab chalte the to aapko dard hota tha to dard yahan hota tha ki upar hota tha Okay. okay, so can you see he is telling you that he is having the yeah. clough claudication as well as thigh claudication. So you can comment in the comment section below what will be or what should be the level of blockage. So let me tell you the level of blockage is always one level above the muscle. So try to understand that if it is outer iliac, so outer to iliac the blood is transiting but iliac territories are not perfused. So in that case he should be having a gluteal claudication thigh claudication, calf claudication. If it is iliofemoral, so from ileum, iliac to femoral, so femoral territories, all those will be geopardized. In that case, he should be having the thigh as well as calf. If it is femoropopliteal, in that case, he should be having a popliteal territories involved in calf claudication. So in this case, he is having both the calf also and the thigh also is involved. And this is hence, I would say clinically suggestible that it's a Popli, uh, that is, it's an iliofemoral claudication. Now, try to understand. Can you notice the posture that he is? He prefers to hang his legs, and he is always pressing the hands, uh, pressing the foot. So most of the time, आप ये बताइए कि क्या ऐसा होता है कि रात में कभी आपको आपकी नींद टूट जाती है या रात में आपको कुछ होता है ऐसा? हाँ जी सर, रात को जब दर्द होता है इसमें सुते सुते चेत हो जाता है। कहाँ पर दर्द होता है? यहाँ पर? नहीं कहीं भी हो जाए। यहाँ हो ग Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 So students, let me tell you what is this? This is what is the classical rest pain. So what is rest pain? So uh, tell me, पहले आपको पैर में दर्द होना शुरू हुआ और बाद में ये Okay. So you can see that this has advanced and resulted in rest pain. What is rest pain? Exis Non-exercise related pain. So this pain is actually over the metatarsophalangeal joints. This is what is very important. Point number one. Second is, it is unrelated to any exercise. It increases on sleeping. Why? Because when your limb is like this, and when you are sleeping, the body's perfusion, the blood flow throughout the body is same. So the same level of blood is there in the limbs, same level in the torso and the other parts. When he is actually sitting down, when he's sitting, just see his hang is his limb is hanging, and when his limb is hanging, the blood tries to pool, and therefore there is relatively better perfusion. As logo say, when you take a history, you will always have a beautiful history that they prefer to sit than sleep. And next thing, if you see he presses his hand over the foot. Why he presses his foot? Basically, why he presses his foot? Because whenever he is compressing, there is shutdown of the pain relay sensory fiber mechanism. So the pain is not relieved. So actually, this is a sense of delusion which the patient has that okay, my pain has been relieved, but it is not. The next thing that you should be looking for are the classical early six symptoms which I didn't ask. क्या आपको पैर में झंझनाहट, जलन ये सब होती है? सब होता है. दर्द होता है. So, <coughs> okay, so just see pain, pallor, paresthesia, paralysis, poikilothermia, 
these are the classical you can say uh, pulse lessness these are the classical six p's that you get now if you focus on his digits can you see this is all gangrenous so gangrene over the great toe and gangrene over the first finger so what the what are we looking at so this patient has a classical history from being asymptomatic to intermittent claudication to rest pain and now to an arterial ulcer as well as gangrene so this is what is very important the classical site for arterial ulcer is the thumb great toe and it is also present over the lateral aspect of the foot now if you see this is an early stage so here there is no such pigmentation and ulceration thank god he has come to us so that we can intervene properly now let us try to understand whenever you are writing your exams or whenever you are presenting it as a viva it's very important to mention what is the fontaine grading for this patient so we have fontaine grading system we have rutherford grading system when we talk about fontaine it is four one is asympto uh, fontaine one is asymptomatic fontaine two is claudication three is rest pain and four is gangrene now one more interesting thing i will tell you this patient is also diabetic so if you see this is also coincidentally a diabetic foot i would not say that this is a burgess disease why it's not a burgess because this patient is a smoker okay that is one thing so being smoker doesn't always mean that it's a burgess the age of the patient what is your aapki age kitni hai chappan saal so that's 56 so more than 50 along with that diabetes along with that patient is having dyslipidemia along with that patient is also having uh, you can say uh, there is no superficial thrombophlebitis or there are no skip lesions so one thing that is that this patient is not a case of burgess disease now when we talk about diabetes so if you take it as a diabetic foot we also have a grading that is wegner's megit grading when we talk about wegner's megit we have the partial ulcers the full thickness ulcers the grade 3 is ulcer with bone involvement then there is four foot gangrene and full foot gangrene so if you see this patient is falling into the wegner's grade 3 grade 3 why because there is no complete gangrene right now so there is gangrenous changes over the bone but still there is healthy tissue so i would say that this patient is wegner's grade 3 according to the wegner's megit grading system so what are the important things that now we should be doing to treat this patient the next is we need to obtain either a mr ngo or a ct ngo ct ngo is better than mr ngo why because it helps to delineate the classic calcification and skip lesions also the next very important thing that we need to understand is baseline is we will also get a duplex doppler study you can say doppler study of arterial system also and venous system also there may be some changes in the venous system also however in this patient it's not now when we talk about the treatment the first line of treatment is simple we have to go for anticoagulants and this is important thing but right now this is not an acute this is a chronic condition so i have started with low dose ecosprin along with that celostazole i have started with and then i have advised the patient to stop smoking now if this doesn't work there are two possibilities either will we will we will have to go for a bypass graft now when we talk about bypass graft before that we might do angioplasty also so why angioplasty so that we can dilate the you can say limb uh, dilate the vessel and transient improvement in terms of flow should be there so either this or along with that we have to go for a bypass now when we talk about bypass grafts in a chronic patients we have to plan a bypass but in this case what should be the preferred graft we have two categories we have autologous and we have synthetic when we talk about autologous gsv great syphenous vein is a big choice ssv gsv but when we talk about the bigger vessels if you want to go for a synthetic we will go for a decron or a ptfe so decron is generally preferred for the aorta or iliacs or big vessels otherwise ptfe is also a good graft in this case so i hope you enjoyed this case this was the small brief presentation of peripheral arterial disease and remember there are two things that there is something which is known as rest pain which the patient has classically demonstrated so these kind of patient should be evaluated and treated properly the second thing is the patient also gave you a beautiful history of intermittent claudication so do share the links with your near and dear friends so that they are also benefited thank you for watching my video